Hey everyone, thanks for joining me. You're watching In Deep on the Delta and today we're going to be talking about the change of light bite and that's the bite that takes place. It's a topwater bite and it takes place just after the sun comes up in the morning for about an hour and then about an hour in the evening just before the sun goes down. It's my favorite time to be out here and it is magic. I'm excited about doing this video today. It's going to have a little something for everyone. There's going to be a lot of top water action. I'll talk about some of my favorite baits that I like to throw. And I'll talk about some unique strategies that are used during this very compressed bite window. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun for you. So stick around. Let's check out the video. First buzz bait fish of the night for me. Wow. I think I got that one on camera. Oh! That's a big one. I'll get the net. I've got the camera, Dad. You can land this yourself. Okay. It's a good fish. Oh, there we go. Hmm. All right, Nate. Nice fish, back to back. Before we get into any more of the video, let's talk about some of the baits I like to use and also some of the strategies that I like to use. The first thing that I'd like to say, because it's such a compressed bite window, usually right around an hour, the strategies that I use for fishing first light and last light are different than the strategies that I use for the rest of the day. And the reason being is that these magic times, they're magic because the fish are coming out they're getting aggressive and they're moving. They're, they're moving up and down the bank, they're moving around the flats, and the strategies that you use are really important because the bite window is so compressed. You make a wrong turn or a few wrong decisions and you're gonna blow your session of fishing. So uh, even with an hour bite, there's enough time in there to work some certain strategies that, that I think put a lot more fish in the boat, at least they do for me. So when you come out here first thing in the morning, first thing in the evening, you're not gonna be moving around a lot. You wanna go right to the air, or right to an area where you know there's fish or where you're confident there's fish and stay in that area and use your time fishing and working that area. You're not gonna use your time moving around. So That's let's talk about baits. I will throw everything from hollow body frogs, bubble walkers, buzz baits. Uh, I will yeah. definitely go with bigger baits at this period of time, that first light, last light. I will still keep on oh, a um, uh, bubble walker, but I'll use the big one. I'll also, if I'm using a um, uh, uh, whopper plopper, I'll use the big one. This is the 168 that everyone uses. I use this guy here. It's the one that they make for, um, for pike, and this takes a lot of big fish. The other baits that I like to use are a big Mikey. I'll use the BBZ1 Rat. Uh, I'll use... Um, uh, just a variety of big walking baits, whatever, uh, you know, I forget, the lunker punkers, things like that. So that's basically all I throw during that period because it's usually, topwater is the most effective bait for me out here. You can catch them on chatter baits and crank baits and everything else, but I stick to uh, the topwater bait. Okay, let's get into strategies. And my number one um, philosophy when I'm fishing, um, uh, the low light periods or the change of light periods is not to imprint fish which means I'm moving quite a bit and I am throwing just one or two casts into every area so let's talk about what what I would be doing if I was um, uh, on a, a a big flat or a flooded island where I can fish 360 degrees around the boat I'll pull up I'll be over the flat I'll think there's fish there maybe I've got a whopper plopper on maybe I've got a popper on uh, I will generally have four or five of those topwater baits on my deck and half of those will be fast moving reaction baits and half of them will be slower baits. So if I'm on a big flat, it's important, number one, resist the urge to go in. You, you get excited, you're out there first thing in the morning, you think you're going to really be catching fish and you blow right into your area. Resist that urge. Head into your area, slow down, move the boat in a methodical way where you're going to be fishing the outside of your area before you actually fish maybe uh, your number one spot or, or, or honey hole within that area. 
So pull up carefully, throw short cast. I usually like to throw long cast during the middle of the day because I'm not getting as many fish and I like to get that bait out a little farther and work more water. But during this period, instead of making a 70 or 80 or 90 foot cast, try making a 50 foot cast. If I am out on a flat, I'll start at the front of the boat and I'll throw one cast 12 o'clock, uh, one cast two o'clock, four o'clock, six o'clock, and I'll work my way around the boat. If I'm throwing two baits, if I'm looking for searching for baits, I might throw a buzz bait once around, four or five cast, and then I'll throw a popper, same thing, four or five, six cast around the boat. Now, if there's two guys in the boat, I'll work one side of the boat, let my partner in the back work the other side of the boat, and then we'll switch around and I'll work one side of the boat, he'll work the other side of the boat. If there's two guys in the boat, do not throw topwaters in the same area. Keep them 50 feet apart if you can. When you have competing baits out there, I think it confuses the fish and it, it, they, they just, it just doesn't seem to work. So two guys in the boat, keep your baits away from each other. Now, if I'm going down a bank, I will, uh, if it's me alone, I'll make short cast and I will work that bait uh, back to the boat and then I will move the boat and make another short cast. So I am constantly throwing to new water all the time. If I throw a cast out here, I'll move the boat up. In my next cast, if it's a 50 foot cast, I may, I may fish 25 foot feet of fresh water. When I make my next cast, I'll, I'll throw it out a little farther and I'll fish 25 feet of fresh water. So you're kind of a domino effect all the way down the bank. That way you're fishing fresh water. Now, when you do that, you're gonna move out of prime areas really quickly, but you have to remember, first thing in the morning, last thing in the evening, the fish are active and they're moving in and out of these places. When I talk about imprinting, I don't wanna to get to my favorite spot where I think is gonna be the honey hole, set my boat up there and continue casting around until the fish come in, because I have a feeling that a lot of times when those fish are moving, they know the boat's there, you're making noise, you're casting around, they're seeing baits flying around, and it's, it keeps them out of that area. So my philosophy is to run through that area quickly, make a few precision casts, see if you're catching fish, and after you go through that area, even if it's five or 10 minutes later, turn around, come back, and go through it again. And you may do that two or three times during your session in the morning, and you're gonna find that within the little neighborhoods that you're fishing, you're always going to have really small compressed areas where you catch a lot of fish. And it could be a point, it could be a drop off, it could be a couple of pieces of wood in the water, whatever it is, those are gonna be your key areas, but don't sit on those key areas. Fish them with a couple casts uh, with um, uh, maybe a couple different types of bait and then move on to that next key area and keep floating around those key areas uh, until the fish actually come on there and that way you'll be able to catch it uh, one or two fish off of each of those areas Pull around come back and maybe catch one or two fish off of those same areas again and again So uh, keep that in mind and, and try not to imprint the water uh, The other thing I would suggest is if you are throwing a slower bait like a walking bait Whether it's a frog a popper or maybe a bubble walker only use half your cast if it's a 50 or 60 foot cast Let's say it's 60 feet fish it for 20 feet and then burn it in. Throw it out 60 feet, fish it for 20 feet and burn it in. Most of my fish come within the first 20 feet, 20 feet of where that bait lands. So every now and then you will get a fish that follows it right up to the boat and it'll slam it right at the boat. But you have to remember in these short bite windows, do you wanna wait for that one big bite that, that the fish is just so aggressive that he sees the boat and comes up and hits it? Or do you wanna keep it in that magic uh, zone of somewhere around 20 feet of where the bait lands where you're catching most of your fish that's kind of the philosophy that I use so cast it out work it 15 20 feet back to the boat and then burn it in and then put it in new water try those strategies and I think you'll have a lot more success during this change of light period so let's get back to some of that action video we'll see what happens
go. That's a little better there. Okay. Man. What a nice specimen, huh? Look at that gut. And look at that. Boy, fun. getting bigger using the bubble walker without any rattles and fishing it really slowly just moving it along real slowly when I when I start to go faster they just don't hit it they're super aggressive when they're hitting it but they're only aggressive when it's moving slowly little by little they're getting better there you go that's a good one Net? As the change of light bite fades, it's still a really good time to be on the river. The fish are still active and you can still catch a lot of fish. What I do during this period of the day is I really jump on the trolling motor, I cover banks, and I start burning the banks with faster moving baits like buzz baits and whopper ploppers. It's also a great transitional time of the day where you can figure out what you're going to be doing later on in the day. Remember the fish that you pick up on these banks on faster moving baits in the morning may be the fish that you can catch later in the day when you have to resort to slower moving tactics like worming and punching. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe, tell a friend, and uh, I'm going to get back to catching a few fish here, and we'll see you guys on the water.